Greetings and salutations, all you folks out there. Got a one versus one for you today. This one's going to be on the Canis River, and it's actually a fairly low rated game. It is a ladder match between a 778 and an 802. So that is about as closely matched as you're going to get. Probably their global rankings are a little bit higher than this, but we're going to go ahead and dive into this for the sake of learning purposes and see where this game will take us. We've got uh, CSG in red on the bottom and Ricky on top going blue. I'm, I, I, is that Ricky? Ricky. Something like that. It's probably a foreign name, which I am butchering sadly with my American pronunciation, but I'm going to go ahead and go with Rick just to be on the safe side, and that is what he will be. This is a Cybern versus Cybern mirror match. We can see here on the opening in the southern end, we have one land factory and a whole bunch of P-Gens. And uh, right off the bat, I gotta say, if you're gonna build that many P-Gens, you need to have an excessive amount of reclaim to grab, which there really is not a ton of here. Uh, there is a substantial amount, but not enough to merit this kind of uh, power gen spam here. And then also, I would recommend making a template of a three to a side circle around a factory. And that way you can plop a couple of them down. That will help protect from early bombers so that you don't get a lot of your power bombed out by just a single bomber. And then Ricky up here, Rick has got a pretty good build going. He is doing, let's see, 7 P-Gen second air, which is a standard build that does pretty well on just about any map. And he's also put out a hunter that's going to loop around to the left side and try to deny any expansion over here into this corner. We may actually see a good bit of aggression here, which is kind of unusual for this level of play, but maybe we'll get a good game out of it. Looks like we've got some land factories planned, and of course, three versus one. I'm actually kind of impressed. <laughs> oh, that was uh, three hunters. That's what it was. Three hunters versus one mantis. That is a normal engagement. Two hunters died, and the mantis died. Gonna have this scout up here, gonna see what's going on, see that air factory, and it looks like we've got all land spam going down for CSG. That is a whole lot of manual reclaim running up the center there, which just got canceled out because apparently either the engine I think the engineer got killed. No, no it didn't. Probably just reselected it and sent it somewhere else. And he pushes his ACU way out to the front here. He's going to loop back around, kill off a couple of units up there, and basically shut down anything coming across the neck. And then we've got a bomber moving around towards the right-hand side. I'm going to have to keep an eye on that. And that is going to come right across directly into what now? Ah, Tech 1 Anti-Air. That is what shot that thing down. Got an interceptor and a scout. Looks like he's going full on air. I would be building nothing but bombers at this point because my opponent does not have any air factory and only has one static anti-air, which can only protect him in a circle right here. So there's no reason not to spam the ever-living daylights out of bombers. Looks like we've got a little bit of an eco advantage to CSG. He has capped a few more mass extractors. He's taking the expansion on the right-hand side. He's about to take the left-hand side. That is going to give him a greater lead. Actually, we're going to break even if Rick fills in this mass extractor here. But CSG is about to lose his expansion. We've got a Mantis, a Scout, Engineer, and an Anti-Air Unit. Nice little mix to take this over. Protect yourself from any bombers or scouts that might fly over. And go ahead and kill off those two mass extractors. Got more stationary anti-air going up. I would highly recommend building an air factory. There is an air factory queued. Just out of curiosity, let's check on our prices here. It is 150 mass for the anti-air turret, and it is 210 mass for the factory. And once the factory is built, we've got 50 mass. So it is actually cheaper to build an air factory and an interceptor than it is to build two stationary anti-air torts. Actually, two factories and like three interceptors. So that is definitely a trade that is an obvious choice. 
We had a huge buildup of units here that was not being used. Kind of a similar thing happening coming down from the north, but the units are on the move now. We've got Rick taking the right side expansion, and it looks like CSG is going to have more than enough units to kill off everything on the right-hand side. But the bad thing about this situation is CSG is going to kill off the engineer building the build power over here, it looks like he may... Ah, point defense came online just in time. That is going to help stem the tide of Mantis that is flooding across here. And then everything that's come up in the production on this side is going to be able to put a stop to that push. So that was a very, very nice push up through the right by CSG. He is going to clear out this expansion as well, and that is going to give him a decisive lead in Eco. Uh, no, actually, I misread that. I'm looking at the wrong person. CSG is actually still behind because he has not been capping the ones on the left. Rick is doing a much better job of expanding. As one side is falling, he already has engineers out rebuilding the mass extractors on the left. So that is very nicely done. Kudos to him for maintaining his eco despite getting raided right, left, and center. CSG pulling over to the left, going to cap those mexes, and we've got Tech 2 on the field now. Got a Tech 2 engineer out, that's going to throw down a Cerberus, and then we've got a Rhino moving down towards the south. Going to clear out this expansion once again, Eco is tied. It is kind of odd. This is one of the things that you see a lot with the 800 players is you'll just have a random point defense, a stationary defense put down. And you know, that's not always a bad thing. I'm just always under the impression that you can do better things with your mass. It's not uh, this turret. You can see how long it's been sitting here. It's going to fire a couple shots and kill something that these units were already going to kill. This turret's basically sitting here useless. Whereas if you'd use that mass to build another rhino or two, you could have sent the rhinos over here and it would have saved you a whole lot of heartache with all of these units coming through. Red had a higher concentration of units than Blue did and that allowed him to push through the neck and kill off those trickle of units coming down from Blue. And then the production is higher on CSG's side. He's got 1,400 reclaim compared to 19 for Rick and slightly lower eco, but he is not, he has all of his mass in combat units. He did not build a Tech 2 HQ. He did not build any stationary defense, and that is letting him field a larger group of units than Blue is. However, that advantage in numbers is gradually going to lessen as more rhinos build up on the field because the rhinos are going to be much more efficient at taking out the tech one as they build up in numbers and uh for those of you who say but the statistical uh the statistic advantage lies with the tech one units that is true but there is this awesome thing called mass density uh, it is the concentration of mass in a tiny area, meaning that units, only so many units can come in range of another group of units at a time. And if you have five rhinos, they can focus fire much more easily on a target. They have a much more concentrated damage potential than, you know, the 30 some odd Tech 1 tanks that that would be mass equivalent to. So not all 30 of the Tech 1 tanks can fire at all five of the rhinos, but all five rhinos can fire at any target they pick in the group. So you can't bring your full damage to bear on any one target. And I love this harassment. CSG is doing a very good job of pushing and prodding and poking his way around into the back. He is harassing Rick to death. And that is basically what you want to do in any given game. You want to keep your opponent off balance, force him to expend units in areas where he does not want to go, and then once all of his units are pulled to one side, you sweep in from the other side, catch him off guard, and kill stuff. 
Ricky losing two Tech 2 mass extractors there. That is going to be a heavy loss on his end. It is dropping his eco substantially versus red. And you notice red only has one Tech 2 mass extractor. The rest of his are Tech 1, and he is continuing to pour resources into this Tech 1 spam as opposed to uh, teching up mass extractors, hitting Tech 2 land, all that kind of stuff. But, one other thing that is working in Rick's advantage, as he is building up a higher concentration of rhinos, red is leaving a lot of mass on blue's doorstep. And you can see that in the reclaim numbers. He's got 3,400 versus the 1,800 for CSG, which is roughly double. So that is going to play a huge factor in which one of these guys comes out on top. Looks like CSG got another Tech 2 extractor online. Either that or he capped several Tech 1s because he's up to 31 income now. And we have a group of Mantis crossing, but you can see the rhinos just melting. That was a complete fail of a push right there. All of those units falling prey to that cluster of rhinos there, just able to bring so much damage to bear. But CSG is doing something interesting here. He's actually gotten the gun upgrade on his ACU, and he was pushing directly in right here. You can see an overcharge there, killing off two rhinos, and he is going to run. His head is not going to go below water because Canis does not really have any water. Actually, does it have any water at all? I don't think it does. Yes, it does. Very No? No, it doesn't. Um, yeah, very tiny, tiny, tiny amount. Um, that is one disadvantage that having the Tech 2 does bring, though, is because since your mass is concentrated into a tighter area, those overcharges do hurt more against your damage potential. And it looks like uh, Rick has got the gun upgrade as well. That's going to allow him to push. Now, one thing I can say, he's trying to stem the tide of units here, but I think if he would have clustered his rhinos together and gone directly after the ACU, I think he could have killed CSG a few moments ago. It was kind. Of, it would have been an all-or-nothing gambit, but at this point, I think that's about all he's got left. He's trying to throw down more stationary defense. Cerberus turrets, though, are just so weak. They're efficient at killing Tech 1, but you got to build several of them. They cost a lot less than the other faction's equivalent point defense. So you need to build two or three of them where you would build one or two triads. And they will eventually catch up with the horde of units. And that, that did happen. I'm actually impressed with that. I did not expect this section to hold right there and that is going to leave this amazing reclaim field here right in the hands of rick who if he can get some engineers out here comes an engineer right here if he can get the engineers out over there he is going to be able to reclaim all of that stuff and then get even more rhinos into his mix pretty soon he will be able to roll anything that red can throw at him because red had he had a good strategy pushing for the rush, but he didn't overwhelm his opponent fast enough. And now we're going to see where not teching is going to start hurting him. Rick survived the teching phase. He is now building up a higher concentration of units than Red has. And if he can stop these freaking runbys over here, Red is doing a very good job on these still. Uh, he will be able to defeat csg pretty easily csg pulling up trying to snag some of this reclaim he's going to start running back though definitely has air well in hand that is nice for being so late to the air game ricky is going to give chase he's got six rhinos and a fire beetle well that's brave Although, with a commander, well, he's got 10,000 health. That will even the score. Throwing that fire beetle at the commander. Will he see it coming? He does see it coming. There it goes. And that's game. Holy cow. You can see the damage brought to bear. Oh, my word. Did I speak too soon? 
That right, oh, no, nope, there we go. Rhino's got him. <laughs> Very nice near escape, but there's just so much damage packed into those rhinos. And that's what I was talking about with the density of your units. There's so much mass, so much damage potential packed into that little group of rhinos that it just sneaks up on you how much potential for destruction that they have. And if you're not careful, you'll catch them in a bottleneck here and you'll have five or six rhinos that can kill off, you know, 50 tech one tanks because they have the advantage of that close quarter high damage. And then when they come after your ACU, well, that brings its own whole host of problems. Alrighty, hopefully you guys picked up something you didn't know before. Maybe the guys that were playing in this game will watch it and learn a little something. That was definitely fun from the learning standpoint. I like dissecting one versus ones. I hate playing them. I, I cannot play them effectively. I just kind of lose my head when I'm in them and I get sidetracked by different things and I just don't have the focus to apply myself to poke and prod and harass and do everything that I can to knock the other player off his balance. But these guys were doing it and kudos to Ricky for surviving that uh, Tech 1 apocalypse. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this game and this cast. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and you will join me for the next one. Thanks so much for watching.